And then when I when I catch it, I really want them to stick the landing on. Yeah, me. like some, some, sometimes yeah, some you got to stick the landing. Some of the media calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's my time. Don't you me cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Blur Bob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I'm your host, Foop. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit those bell notifications for future uploads. Today, I'm joined by my best friend in Blurred Mob Tech, King G. So what's up, King G? What's up, everybody? It's been a minute since I've been in front of y'all. Since the, what was that, Mob Review? We did that Fantastic Beast. Yeah, that's what that was. Review. So how y'all been? How y'all doing? I'm good. Everything been good. You know, working, working out. <laughs> You know, been a blurred. That's what's up. That's what's up. So we are here today to give you guys a special episode for Pride Month. I know it's a little late, but better late than never, right? So basically what we're about to do for you guys is me and King G are two um, of the openly gay members of the Blurred Mob podcast. So we're just going to have a discussion about our experiences as being uh, members of the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> so you forgot the letters. I had it. It's it's a lot of letters. We but can't be the face and don't know the letters. I, I I know the letters. I just you know you know how you had them brain. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finna say the alphabet mafia for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Some of them don't like that. You might get a little backlash. They don't like alphabet mafia. Mm-mm. I thought it was funny. Because, you know, that's something the heteros came up with. Oh, for real? Yeah. We know, did nobody gay come up with that? Why I see somebody gay say that's us a member. That's, uh, I see a lot of heteros say that. Whatever okay, well, say I LGBT. take it back. We're going to say LGBTQ plus the whole episode. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, we can say the community, like. Okay, we can say the community. There you go. So I apologize if anybody was offended of me saying the alphabet mafia. I, I didn't know that it, that was a hero thing. I mean, because they know they say LGBTQ people are always, you know, up in arms and like a mafia, alphabet mafia. I, I didn't see and that. And they say That's alphabet like... in the alphabet part is the, I guess, the this part because. And then we ain't the whole alphabet. Yeah, it's just yeah. I just see a lot of heterosexual people using on social media. I'm like. But okay. it's funny when we I, say it amongst each other. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I said it. I seen somebody who was part of the community say it. And I yeah, was like, okay, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, definitely. I saw that. Yeah. But I didn't know that they was like, I guess I haven't seen it being used in a negative kind of Got you. Yeah, that makes sense. I have. Okay. So we we going to stray away from that just in case anybody who's watching has heard it in yeah. a negative connotation. It's not the vibes that we give it. No. It's not the vibes. But the vibes we are giving today, we are going to share our experience of being in the community, being a blur, how we have taken in certain media, how we feel about media who have tried to include LGBTQ plus uh, characters. And we'll touch on a little bit about what we want to see from the future as far as inclusion of the community in future projects. So I do want to start it off, King G, with you telling the audience, what was that moment in your life where you was like, yeah, I'm a blurred, I'm a nerd? So this definition of nerd that we use today isn't the definition that like they use when we was growing up. Like nerd growing up meant like you were super smart. Right. You know, you in a library reading books and stuff. And that was me, you know, all A student reading books. So I was just considered a nerd by default. But when I came to college, nerd was used in a different context. I was like, oh I don't watch anime for real. I mean I maybe read a few comics. I play some video games. But so I say when I came to college when I started indulging and seeing you know, my friends and those and stuff like that, and you know me being interested in some of the stuff, you know. So I think that was the the moment I was like, okay, this might not be so bad, you know. It's different, but it's not bad. I was thinking that too. Um, 
like when we met in college and then like when the friend group like really started forming that's um i did saw you dabbling more mm -hmm. like we would go to the movies we would play video games and um and then the comics and stuff too just getting that like when the mcu started getting like real big and then it's like okay this is based off this comic or we're about to see a DC movie and then I'll be like, oh, it's based off this one, this one, this one. And then when streaming started becoming like a big thing and they started throwing all like the animated content for like DC movies and the Marvel stuff, like it was, I would say, because it became more easily accessible, you know, mm. it was easier to dab yeah. into it. I think for me, it was pretty early. Like my dad, and I know you guys have heard me say this like a hundred times on the podcast, but my dad really got me into the comic stuff. But when I was first watching it with him, like I wasn't really understanding what I was watching. And I'm just watching a cartoon with my dad because I like cartoons, and you know. You know, it's a the moment with your dad. Yeah. Right. So, but then I would, I want to say like maybe high school, Boomerang. Um, for those who know who Boomerang is, I know it's... <laughs> <laughs> Boomerang was showing reruns of Teen Titans. Like, they were showing, like, late at night, like, at 10 at night. And it worked out because when I was in band, I was doing an all-day... Not an all-day. It was a night band camp. It was, like, 6 to 10 or something like that. So I would get home at 10, and I would just watch Teen Titans. But, I, but it was in that moment that I really, really got into it. And then along with that, my dad was like, hey, you know, this is based off a comic book series. So he pulls out this big ass box of comics and it's all the Teen Titans comics from the 80s. And like, so I'm reading the comics and looking at the cartoon at the same time and just seeing the differences between like the things that they changed, for, like younger audience, how they built up some of the characters that really didn't have a lot of oomph to them in the comics and things like that. But, but it was at that moment, I was like, hmm. This is pretty cool. Yeah. And then from there, like, I can't remember what year it is in college. Like, I started getting an allowance. So I would use my allowance money. It was a comic book shop down the street. So I would use my allowance money to go buy comic books, graphic novels, things like that. Then back in the pre-streaming days where I was downloading all my content <laughs> off the internet, <laughs> that's when I got caught up with, like, all of the the DC movies and things mm -hmm. like that. Or if me and my dad could find one like at the video store, we would, you know, do that. But I think that was like the defining moment of like, I really like this nerd stuff. Okay. I was almost thinking that you were gonna say like, like the college thing makes sense, but I almost wanted to say like, I don't know, so I guess like, cause I know you're a big Mortal Kombat fan. Yeah. So like, when you were younger and playing Mortal Kombat, was that not just seen like as a nerd? Because you brought up the video games thing. Was yeah. it just not seen that way because of like the, the type of game that you were playing? That and also like I didn't really play a lot of games. Like it maybe it was MK, GTA. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember playing Spyro growing up, um, SmackDown versus Raw, you know, the mainstream games that were out growing up. Mm -hmm. And not even all of those, honestly, because I bet you can name some more mainstream games that I probably haven't played. Mm -hmm. So I was just like the number of games that I play and the type, like, I wasn't really into like RPG games and stuff like mm -hmm. that until, you know, college. And I started saying, you all play those type games. I was like, okay, this look lit. This look fun. Let me go download it and see what it's talking about. Okay. That makes sense. And the fact that you brought up, like, the fighting games in GTA, I remember, like, back in the day, like, the fighting games, like, GTA was, like, standard. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like how 2K is now. Yeah. Like, you having a console and having 2K, I wouldn't necessarily be like, you're a video game connoisseur. Right. And that's how I felt, like, having, like, MK and GTA, because everybody got that, like. Right. You know, like, then when you get into the weeds and start talking about, you know, Assassin's Creed and God of War and Spider-Man, mm -hmm. I'm just like, I ain't really play. I mean, I dabbled in God of War and maybe played Spider-Man once or twice growing up, but it just didn't give, like, the It didn't game. give, like, oh, you just play a bunch of video games. Right. In the house. 
Mm-hmm. You got sex games. Right. Now we got that one console. And- <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you think about like books and stuff, now I read Buku books growing up. So if you want to okay. count the books in, like, I guess, yeah. I would count the books because, yeah. like, I know you're a big fan of like the Percy Jackson yes. series. Yeah. Like, I think. Like anything by that author. Shout out to Rick. I don't want to say his last name. Right. Um, right. Ryan Ordina. Okay. Something like that. Shout out to him because like all the stuff he read is just Chef's Kiss. I mean, not read, bro. It's Chef's Kiss. Like, it's good stuff. I don't know. Like, the more that we dive into it, you might have been a nerd from like the start, but you just, you just took did. it in different form. Yeah. Because, like, Percy Jackson, that's like the main competitor to like Harry Potter, even mm-hmm. though Harry Potter is the one that got like the big boom. Right. But, like, if we look at like fantasy series. Mm-hmm. Like, I would give you that. Okay. I'll take it, you know. Okay. <laughs> no, I guess, you know, I just didn't think about it, like, growing up, like, am I a nerd? And, you know, I just. I guess because, that, right? like, it didn't really become, like, mainstream. Like, we see it now, but, like, it was it was especially big after the pandemic. Like, when everybody started getting into anime, everybody started getting into these fandoms. Or, like, and the people who had already appreciated the art was just finding, like, a bigger community because so many people were dabbling in it. And that was just become, like, mainstream. Right. Like, it's just, everybody's pretty much involved at this point. Yeah. Like, my TL is agree. filled with people who have read Harry Potter, watched Sailor Moon, play Mortal Kombat, or some other type fantasy yeah. game. Like, the way that social media has, like, built its algorithms from this part is, like, you find more of your community, and it's, like, it's less, you, you see less of people who wouldn't have dealt with it. Right, right. The algorithm, you know, you just liking simple tweets, and mm-hmm. just, you know, I gotta stop liking fight tweets, because... Spice just be popping up on my Twitter. I gotta stop there. I gotta stop dabbling in, in that. He be like, oh, they tear his ass up. Ooh, Ooh, like, hold your head up, baby. Hold your <laughs> head up. Like, woo. <laughs> okay, okay. So the next question I want to ask is like, so in college, you know, when we met, when we both met in college, we were both already out. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like, as you dabble more into the nerd community, did it, I guess, like, did they have any effect on each other? Like, you being more consumed in nerd culture have more effect on, like, your sexuality or did, it, did like, how you perceive your sexuality come into more of, like, the media that you consume or the games that you play and things like that? Not for real. I didn't think. They had a correlation. But I did notice, like, growing up that, like, nerds can be different. Like, mm-hmm. you know, nerds can be gay. Like, and it was, like, even in some of the media I saw, like, some of it, like, some of the nerds were queer-coded in a lot of the TV shows mm-hmm. and this movies. Like, they didn't just say it, but you, it, it gave queer, you know, with the stuff they wore, how mm-hmm. they act, like, you know. So I did notice that. But, like, for me personally, no, it didn't have a direct correlation. Did you notice it think, uh, more, like, as, because, like, you said, like, you started getting more into, like, RPGs, and you started stepping out of your usual media content and started stepping into, like, anime, DC, mm-hmm. Marvel. Did, like, that help you, like, identify with certain characters, or did, like, some things kind of, like, click with, like, certain characters just as you started expanding into different content? I don't know. I wouldn't think so either. Like, I don't know. It's just me personally, my gayness and my nerdness. Oh, they didn't really like clash or mix. Like, Mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't any barriers. But I mean, now as I'm seeing it, like as playing more games, like you do see like the queer coded stuff or, you Mm -hmm. know, like the LGBTQ coded things in the games and stuff. So I guess me being gay and dabbling to these things, I'm aware when I see the stuff in the media. Right. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I think for me, like, with the media I consume, because, like, at first, um, when I was thinking about this question, I was, like, I was thinking, like, alongside of you, like, mm-hmm. they're mostly, like, separated. Yeah. Like, if, it, if you look at it, like, an overall thing, it's, like, 
me, like, liking all this DC, Marvel stuff, playing all these games and stuff doesn't really um, correlate with, like, mm -hmm. me being a lesbian. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, cause it's like you, I can exist in that space and I can have mm -hmm. conversations with people like that would never come up. Right. And it was like, I guess as coming out, like, and, cause I came out in high school and then like that whole thing with like me really getting into DC comics, like that was like an area that I could exist in mm -hmm. and not have to worry about the stuff that was going yeah. on, on the outside. But like now like how you were saying, like now becoming more aware of like the queer coded things mm -hmm. inside of different media. I won't say that I look for it, but I yeah, catch it. Yeah, catch it, yeah. And then when I when I catch it, I really want them to stick the landing on yeah, it. Yeah, like some, some, sometimes yeah, some you got to stick does, that landing. Some of the media does not stick the landing. Like you started off, but it's like they What's the picture that horse? Like, it's thought off nice. And the <laughs> ass on it is just booty. Like, that's how it be. Like, y'all y'all get us ready, then y'all drop the ball. Like, I think. Just like with Cora. Like, Cora's a prime example. Oh, of y'all got us ready. I'm glad. I mean, y'all drop the ball and y'all try to pick it up at the end. Like, y'all like. In the comics, but yeah. like, like, I get the times. Mm -hmm. Like, Cause, cause the biggest example that I want to put out is Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of my favorite. That's a nice one too. Sailor Guardians is Sailor Uranus, and in the sub, the Japanese version, she's openly gay. Her and Sailor Neptune mm -hmm. are in this relationship. They refer to each other as such. They don't do too much, right? You know, with it, but it's it's like you can you could see it. It's there, and then like. I'm glad, one, I'm glad I watched Sailor Moon in Japanese, because when I found out what they did with the English version, they tried to switch them up to make it seem like they was cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's disgusting. One, that's disgusting. And then two, that's just like, that's taking that representation yeah, away and, and removing it or sticking the landing. Mm -hmm. And then, like, let's, and then you bringing up chorus, mm -hmm. like, Sailor Moon came out like in the 90s and then we fast forward to 2014 mm -hmm. and we had to see Korra go on this whole bisexual type journey thing where really had Legend of Korra come out right now, I think she would have just been, you know, this Yeah, really she'd have been, yeah. It would have been like I know you didn't finish She-Ra, the Netflix version, mm -hmm. but like She-Ra, even though she didn't have, like, until the very last season, like, you could tell how this was going to go, but they never made it to where, oh, she might be dabbling on both sides. Mm -hmm. They just let her do her thing. They let her exist as a lesbian who is, you know, the, who is She-Ra, this big, magical, you know, figure, and let her do her thing, and then get at the end, and then they went for the punch. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's stuff that I appreciate. Mm. But I, I, I get it with, like, Legend of Court is an audience that you have to go for. You have to think of the times. But I, I honestly, truly believe that she would have been one of the girls from the job. She, she would have been. And it gave that. She was so queer-coded. Like, honestly. She, and people say, oh, she was just a tomboy. It was beyond that It was me. beyond the time. It the, was beyond. The thing, I was I got so excited when I watched Legend of Court because in I'm going to preface this and say that I know that there is media that exists with people who look like me mm -hmm. as far as like me being black, my sexuality, how I move, my thought right. process, et cetera. But that, that's not some of the media that I consume. Mm -hmm. So when Legend of Core came up and I was like, oh yeah, I know where it's going to go. Like I, I associate, I mm -hmm. identify, right. like I, I saw so much of myself in Core, but they did not stick the landing. The landing. They and then it was like, so now I see some of myself in you, but it's that one little piece that mm -hmm. I just can't. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I understand you guys did it at the end, but like her journey is not my journey right. in that aspect. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I've seen a lot of people talking about what's the boy, what's his name, the little brother in mm -hmm. Legend of Korra. Um, I can't think of neither one of the brothers tonight. The Earthbenders. Bolin? They gonna eat me up. Huh? Bolin? Yeah, people feel like they forced his straight relationship with his girl. Was he in some kind of? Yeah, yeah. Of people feel like that's forced because he was quick coded too. Like it gave Bowling gave like a gay little brother, and people like I saw it on TikTok and I saw it on Twitter where people was like, "Yeah, like they they took that for him. He should have been 
with a boy or at least, you know, bisexual. Because it gave that, like, Bolton gave. Like, his personality, he was just so... And not just to say, like, everybody that's outgoing and extroverted is queer, but, like, he was... It was like, you saw those feminine aspects. It was it was there, at least to me. Yeah. I think they could have did a lot with the series had it not came out when it did. Mm. Because cause I'm looking at, like, media that's come out now where people are just like, boom, this is how it is, this is how you're going to get it. Yeah. Like, I talked about She-Ra. Arcane mm. is a big example because, like, Vi and Caitlyn, like, off real, you yeah. already, I already, first of all, I already knew what was going on with Vi. That's <laughs> big Vi. Yeah, <laughs> not big Vi. <laughs> like, that's big Vi. And I was like, I already know what was going on with that and, like, how they, you know, but the way that they told the story, they did it in a way that it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Because, you know, I like... Definitely see that. So you remember, like, how we used to watch, like, the CW shows, and they would introduce a new character, and then at the end, like, it turned, they, they hint to the fact that, mm -hmm. oh, she's gay, she's a lesbian. Yeah. They, like, mm -hmm. news, but they, and then they do it in a way where they just... Mm, it's so much in the story, and I was like, it, it, really, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it don't. Like, it just... Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Because it was on Supergirl. Her sister was gay, wasn't it? When her sister yeah. Was, yeah, and that, see, that's what I was finna say Supergirl, but my bad. It's not, it was Supergirl. It was her older sister or her. I do yeah, know I guess it was her sister. Yeah, you could say sister even though well, it was. It, was, sister, it was like her adopted sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not adopted sister, was, she was the adopted sister. I'm, I understand what you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here. We're on the same page. But yeah, I just feel like even though I can't remember the sister's name because she was one of my favorites because she had them hands though. She used to get out with the best of them. But yeah, I forgot her sister's name too. She was, she was queer coded a little, but I just feel like CW just didn't do it right. Like you it know, felt forced. Even though she was queer coded, it gave like lesbian vibes, like mm -hmm. tomboyish, you know, rough around the edges vibes. The way CW did it just did it just felt like still kind of felt forced. Like y'all was trying to make it too obvious. Like we got it. Like you could have, you know. But I do like the way they did Black Lightning. Um, Thunder, yeah, Vanessa. They did Vanessa that. I, her girl, a, I like that. Nah, they that did a good job with Anissa. Anissa, uh, that's her name, Anissa. Because it wasn't like it was there, but it, was, it wasn't like part of her identity. Mm -hmm. It was right. like here's this thing. Let's move on. And they wrote it in so normal. Mm -hmm. That it was like they didn't make it a big thing. It was just like this is happening because mm -hmm. this is who she is. And I also like the the fact that they didn't play into like the whole tomboy side with Anissa and her girlfriend. They yeah. both was very feminine, mm -hmm. pretty dresses, heels, makeup, full piece. And it was lesbian. And I love that because the same thing with gay guys. With gay guys, they always try to portray us as flamboyant. Mm -hmm. With lesbians, they try to portray y'all as like real. Tom boys and hard and time. let me just run, I run this shit like sit down boys like I'm in the building like I would say in my experience I think they try to it's I've seen like the tomboyish aspect but like sometimes I do see like the the film like mm -hmm. it, it has to be like the two pretty girls yeah. and that like this is what if it's gonna be two lesbians they they pretty because I'm I'm thinking about like arrow and you remember how they introduced sarah okay yeah and then dan her she had um whatchamacallit that worked for the league of shadows i know what you're talking about yeah Nissa. yeah, yeah. And, but they was like and it was like okay cool they're lesbians but then when you look at them they're like they're like these top tier yeah. like bad bees, mm -hmm. like eight girls on the scene or whatever and i was like okay yeah i don't, I don't think all of them are just like I, I know what you're talking about. Like, they do, like, put him in as tomboy just mm -hmm. to fit that tomboy thing. But then sometimes, even then, they don't stick the landing. Mm, yeah. They just a tomboy until the right dude come around. Right. And now they wear dresses and they got their hair down. And they like, oh, my God, we didn't know you can. <laughs> That's what Girl, I'm saying. Like, yeah. sometimes they don't stick the landing with that. But one... This relationship I did not like in the show, and this is my all-time favorite show, How to Get Away with Murder. Annalise, you probably didn't watch, but Annalise was in the room. She was bisexual. They were told her as bisexual in the show. Or mm -hmm. People could say pan or however you, however you have it. She was with Jean Grey from X-Men Last Stand. Okay. They had their thing. And I just, 
that did not give to me. I was like, so do you feel like that was like one of those forced? But then, like, it didn't give, but at the same time, it didn't feel forced. Like, that's what it was so weird about it. Like, I was like, this don't give, but it don't feel forced. It feel like something too powerful women that's behind their sexuality all these years are doing. Mm -hmm. Like, getting the office, talk business. It get real heated and intense, and it goes from there. Like, it, so it gives that, but I was like, it just didn't give. Was it, a, was it, and not to be, like, superficial or whatever, was it, it was it, not giving because it wasn't attractive, like going back to my point. I'd probably say that because those two so, women are attractive on separate individually. Viola Davis and who I can remember her real name. I'm just gonna say Jean Grey from the last then. Y'all know who I'm talking about. There's beautiful women on as individuals, but when you put them together in a scene, it just didn't it just didn't give and that's, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, like with the lesbian mm -hmm. thing, like both like they have mm -hmm. to look good yeah. like even if like with the masculine standpoint they still have to have like some feminine mm -hmm. qualities for somebody to find this like attractive right yeah so like and i guess that's what i like about arcane because the way that they drew vi and the way that they drew kaylin is like you could see like their their imperfections yeah. like yeah vi's like big and strong but she's also like she got cuts everywhere she got mm -hmm. beat up she got tattoos everywhere mm -hmm. And then, you know, Caitlyn, like, she's not, like, Caitlyn's cute, but it's, like, but you can see, like, the different, mm -hmm. like, inf imperfections yeah. and stuff. So, it's, like, I I appreciate that. Uh -huh. I also wanted to spin back to Sailor Moon, because it was, like, another thing with, like, with me, with, like, being, like, the mass lesbian, is that, I guess... Like, I understand I'm that, and then there's, everybody sees me, like, the, like my whole friend group is, like, guys, and, like, I give off that type of energy. But then one of the other things that, like, you kind of struggle with that is, like, accepting the parts of you that are mm -hmm. feminine. Right. And... Do you feel like you struggle with that? Because I just feel like around us, because you do hang around a lot of dudes, like, you got to be... Abrasive, you got to be hard because you, you hang around a lot of dudes, so you got you can't be just sitting there all day, like because it, it we just not run over you, but like you wouldn't be a force within the friend group. So I feel like you got to be that way, hang with a lot of guys. I, I think I've found it like to now in my 26 year old self, I think I found a way to where I've balanced it both mm -hmm. to a way that I'm comfortable. And I know I joke about it a lot, but like, yeah, I'm not lifting no soul, moving, cutting no, I'm not cutting no grass. I know that's right. That's for the men folk. Like, I joke about it, but like, sometimes I'll be like, dead serious. I was like, no, nah, that's for like the men folk. Yeah, I feel that. Um, and the cutting the grass part was a joke. Joke. My auntie cuts the grass. She's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, one of the biggest like examples that I kind of appreciated, like going back to Sailor Moon was like going back to Sailor Uranus is like when you see her like in, in like the everyday type thing, like she's wearing like the mask clothes. She's just like, you can see like this is mask lesbian. And then it's time to transform and she got this skirt on and yeah. this lip gloss, yeah. but she doing her business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not like, Oh, I hate wearing this skirt. It was like, no, we finna get down. <laughs> and like, I know it was a cartoon, but it, it kind of yeah. gave to me like those moments where you have to be feminine. You just have to own it. You, right, you, you, you just have to. It, you yeah. just have to do it. It's like I know I give off like this mass energy, but like sometimes when it's time to sit back and lie into that mm -hmm. feminine energy, I'm gonna do that, but like right. with no shame, because yeah. I, I like I've I've struggled with like. The, the feeling of, like, being too girly. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how does that make me feel? And then when I come to realize it, it was like, it, it is mm -hmm. what it is. It's okay you can't lift that stove. It's okay. I'm not mad that I can't lift the stove. The washing machine dryer. I'm not lifting the washing machine. Or whatever. It's, but I I joke about it, but it's just, it's just to say that through some of the media I consume, like, even, like, with Vi or even, like, with Core, like, even mm. with them showing those tomboyish or, like, mass attributes, you see, like, moments in them that's, like, really feminine. But it doesn't take away from, like, their character. Right. Or, like, how anybody has, has seen them. And, like, that helped me a lot with my, like, 
kind of struggle because it's like okay you can you can coexist mm -hmm. in both of right. these personalities mm -hmm. and i just really hate and i really want society to understand that at the end of the day lesbians even though they are time boys for rugged they are still women at the end of each day i tell my cousin this all the time like it's all right like I, uh, everybody might not understand, but I understand that you're still a woman and like that's still in you, whether you don't, no matter how bad you don't want that to be in you, it's, it's there, it's nature, it's nature, it's going to be there, it's going to be in you and that's okay, like that's just fine. Yeah. But also not to like discourage the people who just really just don't mm -hmm. like be right. feeling it and that's when you get into like the trans man mm -hmm. type Yeah, aspect. yeah, definitely, yeah. So it's like, like if you really not feeling it, like. Mm. Don't force it. Right. And then and that was like another thing, like I guess I'm with my feminine, like I don't force it. Force I just it, let yeah. it come out. And like I said, it just it is how it comes out. It right. is what it is. But it comes out in a way that I'm comfortable with. Right. right. And that don't mean I'm gonna turn around and start like wearing skirts and makeup and stuff. It's just that mm. I'ma do I'm gonna do my own thing. Right. If you feel it, don't force it. But if you feel it, it's okay. It's, okay. it's all right. It's, it's all right, right baby. Well, it's all right, baby. You want some Sprite? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we kind of already talked about this, but really to just, like, put it on the table. What is your, like, biggest complaint with LGBTQ plus representation in the media that you consume? I just, first I'm going to say, I really just, when I say this, I really just want them to stop portraying our own gay men as feminine and flamboyant. And I understand that you have to, you don't even have to make it obvious that they gay. Like, just, they're just gay. Like, the people, the girls that get it are going to get it when we see it. Like, mm -hmm. and that's, it's not meant for everybody. You, you don't have to tailor it so everybody can see it. It's for the ones that can see it. So when I do see those crib coded or those gay coded things, I, I see them like we here, I see you and you see me. That's what it's for. It's not for everybody to understand. So making it painfully obvious that somebody is gay, it's just, it's overkill. So how do you feel about, because there are certain characters and I was thinking about somebody from Game of Thrones and they made him bisexual. Mm -hmm. And I guess my question to you is, is when they don't make them real flamboyant, they throw bisexual in there. Yeah. And, and how do you feel about that? I just, I, don't, I really don't like that either. But, you know, it's just, it's just so much people can eat, I guess. But mm -hmm. then it just goes back to it's not for everybody. I'm going to just keep standing on that. It's not for everybody. So I'm going to just say, no, I don't like that either. I don't like when y'all want to show a masculine gay that you just got to fall back on, oh, he bisexual. The masculine, masculinity equals women or equals straightness. And no, it does not. Like, But I do like how they were murdered because they did have a few gay storylines. And I do like the way they portray gay men because, like, even though it was a lot of white gay men, that's another problem with it itself, the media. Mm -hmm. But they did, all the guys that I saw were feminine. They were just like regular, regular, you know, your lawyers, your doctors, your nurses, your regular, regular white men. They was just gay. So I really appreciated that because we do exist. They do exist. I'm not a gay white man, so I can identify with them. But <laughs> they, y'all exist, y'all out there, and we see you and we love you. So I appreciated that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. If he masculine and he gay, he don't got to be bisexual. It's just, it's all right to be masculine and gay. It's all right to have two gay characters on the couch playing the game. And they both got on basketball shorts and, you know, Nike socks. And they both teddy and they just chilling and, mm -hmm. you know, vibing. It's okay. Like, there are gay relationships like that, too. Okay. When you brought that up, I was trying to think of... I remember on Young Justice when they made uh, they made Aqualad into a same sex relationship, and then they ended up throwing a girl in there, and then I was like, I'm not mad at it, but it's kind of like it goes it goes back to my stick the landing, right? And that landing one stuff type of thing. It's kind of like I guess from my perspective is that it's never singular. Like, I'm not saying that I'm mad about seeing, like, bisexual representation or, like, different types of relationships and diving into that. But I don't see a lot of it being singular. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess is that what like you're getting at? Like you you want that singular instinct from the jump of it existing and not having to make it a big thing or we're dabbling in both sides. Right. It's just just you know, gay and masculine and it's fine. And I mean gay and feminine is fine too, but it's just so much of it like gay like when you see a character in a million that's gay, like you're gonna see them, they're gonna be feminine, and you just gonna know they're gay, like right off the bat. And that's gonna be your talking gay character in the show, game, movie, whatever you watch it. That's all we usually get. Like, it might be some shows that do dabble into that masculine. Like I said, How to Get Away with Murder didn't do that. They didn't just give us a flamboyant guy and was like, bam, they go, yo, gay. But most, nine times out of ten, is gonna be somebody flamboyant. Just like in the movie, just saw the black and then, like, we knew who the gay character was right off the bat. Like, yeah. it gave that from jump, and it don't. It doesn't always have to be that way. Like, that was cool. Not to just try to shit on that movie. I really enjoyed that movie. That was a good ass movie. But it don't always got to be. Hey, girl, you know what? What you doing? It don't always got to be that. You know, because yeah. it's not always that. Like, or you see a lot of times where it's like it's secretive too. Mm-hmm. Like, it might be like a mask. Um, gay man, like how you were saying, but the way that they move is secretive. It's mm-hmm. like it's not really open, right, all the time. And I don't like that either. To see that, and that's just linking gayness with being sneaky, because not all of us are sneaky. And and the ones that are sneaky, we're only sneaky because we had to be. If y'all didn't make us have to be sneaky, we wouldn't have snuck. Like <laughs> it's just it's y'all fault. Like y'all growing up, parents y'all made y'all gay boys and sons and daughters. You know, we had to sneak. We couldn't be gay in the open, so we had to sneak. So y'all created the sneaky beings out here. Like, you can't turn around and talk about us because you created us. Like, if gay people didn't have to sneak growing up, it wouldn't, like, the whole vibe of a guy being gay and it's like a secret, like, shh, like, we can't tell nobody he gay. Like, it's because of y'all. Y'all made that, it like that. And I really hate that too, sitting in the media. Like, you do see a masculine guy in the show, but like. And I, and I get it, like, with some shows, you have to play into reality. Mm-hmm. Like, you just saying that from, like, your personal experience and then mm-hmm. tying into, like, shows that we've seen that done the same thing. It's like, it's not made up. Right. Like, that part of reality exists. Mm-hmm. But I think it would be nice to see if we could get, like, a storyline that removes right. that part. Because mm-hmm. we always see that part. That part of reality, like, you know, mm-hmm. flamboyant gay, and he gonna find... Probably some somebody boyfriend or some single masculine man that really don't care about him for real. That just want to have sex for real, and it just be that. There you go, and that's it. There go your gay storyline. You better eat it, and it better be nice. And it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would be your biggest compliment then? The fact that we have gay representation in the media. Now, that would be the biggest, because, you know, it, 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 it wasn't like this, like, growing up. Like, you just... Or when they somebody... in, they did it weird. Like, mm. you ever seen the thing about, like, Lilo and Stitch, like, with Pleakley, or then in, in like, Roger and American Dad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's very obvious what kind of character is supposed right. to be. But they're aliens, so it's right. not like you can really... I, I'm not going to identify myself with an alien. <laughs> right. But it's like they make those... Like, they've been sneaking in those characters mm-hmm. the whole time, but they make them, like, aliens, or they make them some different type of forms mm-hmm. to make it, like, acceptable. Right. I can definitely see that. I was going to say something else, but I forgot. So we can I'm keep sorry. it <laughs> I, it was just something that I thought of because mm-hmm. you know, Clinkley used to he used to do cry. He used to cross dress, yeah. And everybody used to just go about their business because he's an alien, right? And Roger, Roger does the too, same. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ah oh, man. But I will say the biggest comment is seeing that because this is what I was going to say. Growing up, like when we saw somebody gay in a TV show or movie, it was like, ooh, they gay. Like, it just, you and know. So right, and, right, like, it's just, like, such a big deal. Like, oh, my God, it's a gay character. Like, this is just supposed to be breaking news. Like, first lead gay man in the movie. Like, and now it don't really give that. Now it's like, oh, okay, he gay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm happy it's getting to that point, even though it's not 100% at that. Some people do get upset talking about a gay agenda, quote-unquote gay agenda. And First of all, don't nobody sit at home. We don't have no meeting. 
Cause, but if they did, I probably missed it. Like, did I miss it or something? Because, like, what's the media where we gather together it. and talk about the gay agenda and put it in the media for the children? Can I come to the meeting? Can I talk to the board? Like, cause if we, if that is the, the the plan, y'all doing it wrong. Like, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's giving that. So the gay agenda thing in the media, like, I just want to drop that in the trash. Don't nobody care about y'all kids for real. And or I, I would just say that. Is, I guess for like certain cartoons mm-hmm. when they when they add in characters, it's not I I it's always seen as like in a negative connotation, mm-hmm. but I always see it like it's just exposing them to the world that's mm-hmm. existing. This, right. is, this is the world that exists. And it's not like they're doing it's not like they're doing everything like every episode that you know right. Pride, right. Like, in every episode it's just that I because the Cartoons that I watch that have gay characters in it. It's yes, they're gay, but they just exist and they do the same things that you do. They do the same jokes that you do. Like nothing really, at personality wise, doesn't change. Right about them. It's just that's just a part of their identity, and I just mm-hmm. see it as like we're exposing you that this thing, this term of sexuality, can be a part of somebody's identity, right. but it doesn't change the fact that oh, we're still watching this happy-go-lucky cartoon. Right, and it makes me think of a show on Nickelodeon, I can't remember the show, the little boy had two dads at home, like, and it just shows the children, like, you can have a friend, and the whole time your friend, he got two dads at home, and there's nothing wrong with that. And show on Nickelodeon. I can't remember what show, it might have been Cartoon Nickelodeon, it was a cartoon show. And I'm boy, thinking about Cartoon Network, because wasn't it, was it Craig or the Creek? But is it Craig or Craig? But I don't think Craig had two dads. I think I thought was one of his. I thought it was one of his friends. Okay, it might have been Craig or the Creek. Yeah, I was gonna say Craig or the Creek at first, but I was like, dang, Craig ain't got two. Or it might have been Clarence. It was one of those two. I want to. I don't know. No, but yeah, the, the little boy had two dads, and I feel like it just shows kids like yo, your friend can have two dads, and that's okay. Like, yeah. you ain't gotta be. Ooh, you got two daddies. You got two mommies. Like, it's life. It's reality. Like, and the way that they put it in there, they just show it and they move on. Right, they just move on. Oh, hey, dad, hey, dad, and he just gone by his business. Like, boom, there you go. Yeah, I think that would be my biggest compliment as well is that we're getting it. Right, like when, care when like media comes out and they do have their gay character, and it's like okay, cool. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just adding a different layer mm-hmm. to it. Um, and then like with the media that I that I see like going forward is that um they they touch on some of the issues with it mm-hmm. as well. So yeah. I would like to see more of it, though. Yeah. The and, other white way, stick them landings. You full twist and lay out. Stick that landing, and you get your tens. And, and for some of it to happen, like, naturally, and mm. not for it to happen to be, like, a drama point. And I, and, I, and I get it. Like, sometimes it is, like, a drama point. It's like, ooh, what? <laughs> like, I get it. Like, sometimes you be like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I get it, and, then, like, sometimes I, I really, like, appreciate the stories that include uh, LGBTQ plus mm. characters, and it's natural. Like, right. their introduction is natural, or even if they're if they're coming upon, like, a journey of getting there, it feels right natural, like, the experiences, especially, like, when you can relate to it. I was just going to say, like... Like, I definitely appreciate that, like, because you do have, like, some of those out of the blue... Mm-hmm. Type things, and it's like okay, I don't mind it, but like where did it come from, like right. But I really appreciate like where you see them like going through the struggles. Okay, mm-hmm. it's like these are the struggles that I went through, right? And then it's like the decisions that they make, and I was like, okay, that might have been a decision that mm-hmm. I would have made. And then when you get to that point, it's like you've seen them go on that journey. You can identify with different pieces of it. Mm-hmm. And there's some shows that execute that very well, and some of them is like you were almost there, but like, mm. so that would be my my biggest compliment. So my last question is, and I guess we've kind of already talked about it, but once again, to lay it on the table because we've been saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> these past 45 minutes, but like, what is one thing that you would like to see going forward um, with LGBTQ plus characters and media? I'm trying to think of something we ain't already said, but you know, it's, do we continue keep up the good work, but stick that landing, do it right, like natural, like create experiences that your audience can relate to. Like. Mm-hmm. Cause I said that Bros movie. Have you seen the Bros movie? Uh uh-uh. We gonna have to watch the Bros movie one day. I'm gonna make Antoine watch. You gonna watch the Bros movie? Yeah, I don't think he might not want to watch that, but I'll make him watch it. Whatever. But I really like that movie. Like the way it portrayed like gays in the media, like those experiences that they went through in that movie. Like mm-hmm. I can relate to those experiences, so I really enjoyed that movie. Like so, it's stuff like that. Like. It was just natural. So I can relate to, you know, the, the apps, you know, the random hookups, the, you know, emotionless, you know, sexual experiences. So things like that. Keep the experiences realistic. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, some of your artists can relate to. Okay. I would say for me going forward, like, I guess as new, like, media comes out, like stuff that's never existed before, because we, we've seen a lot of, like, um, when they go back, I've I've seen it in like Marvel and DC comics. Like they go back and just add like identities to certain characters for them to fit in the box or whatever. But I would like to see, like, as new media comes about, or like we're making a new series based on this, or we're um, this is just this complete idea that this guy just made up is to continue trying to find the space. Yeah. For those characters. Okay. And my biggest thing is just making sure that whatever journey they goes through feels natural. And you're not just putting them there just to say we have representation. Right. And I just hate that. Like, you just throwing characters in just to, set, just to check the box. Like, right. same thing I with mean, black characters. Like, that's why I was, I was just about to get at that. Because I think at the point now is that there's such a big thing on inclusion and representation mm-hmm. and diversity is that. Some productions do look at it as checking right, a and box, I really hate that. and it's like we check that box and that's it. But at the same time, yes, you check the box, but what's the effort and the energy that you're putting into mm-hmm. it? Don't just check the box right. and then just be it. But like any story that they have, or um, or any piece of them that could mm-hmm. flow naturally into the storyline, exactly. Like, Go ahead and do it. Right. Go ahead and do it. Like we just we not asking you to just every episode just remind us that I'm gay. Right. I'm gay. But don't ask I'm out gay. about it either. Stop asking out and cater to these heterosexuals because it's not all about them. Like I don't care about them being mad on social media. <laughs> we love hey, the kids, but and there's no gay agenda in the media, so y'all gotta let that go. Like if anything. I think them being upset, I I could see like them being upset as a good thing Mm -hmm. because then the characters are being represented in a way to where it's obvious, it's out Mm -hmm. there. It's like you see the signs that we can identify the journey, the process, et cetera. Instead of you had somebody who was kind of like, like queer coded, like he could be. But I'm not really sure, so I'm gonna stick to the side that they're showing yeah. me on the TV, and instead of playing in that safe space, yeah, like we we can make theories all day, but what did they show on the show? Mm. So, yeah, okay, that's what's up. But I would definitely say, like, being a nerd, being a gay black nerd, it's been a, I to me, it's been a fun experience. Mm. Cause being a excuse me, I'm sipping that drink, drink, y'all. Excuse me, but <laughs> the nerd, like being the nerd, like it's, anybody can be a nerd. And that's what I love about it. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of queer culture in nerd culture, like, and it's just so accepting. Like, I just love it. Like, even with some of like the anime characters, like right. they're so queer coded, you know. Just so I just feel like being a nerd and being. You know, gay, queer, bi, lesbian, LGBTQ, however you want to do it, flip flop, and then pay the way. There is going to be a space for you 
and nerd culture, black right. culture. And that doesn't necessarily, like going back to what you said earlier, and it doesn't necessarily have to correlate with your sexuality. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, yes, it's a big triumph and it's very, like, heartwarming mm-hmm. when you can find the character to identify in the media and the spaces that you enjoy. But I also like the fact that sometimes it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like how you and me and the rest of our friend group can sit down and have a full conversation about Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. or an anime we just watched or a movie that we just watched. And I know sometimes when we talk, like we do bring up our experiences mm-hmm. at, of being in the community and why we feel the way that we feel. But in the initial conversation, it it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right. That we all like our preferences are different or whatever mm-hmm. because we're talking about this single piece of media that we all have like a piece into. Okay. So. Definitely. Yeah, it, it doesn't like now that I keep lining now that I think about it, like all the conversations we have around all this stuff, like you know, anime, video games, movies, like being mm-hmm. gay, it I mean being part of the community, it doesn't matter because like what does it have to do with what we're talking about? Right. What does it have to do with the latest episode of My Hero? Yeah, you gay. Okay, sit down. So, what you think about that, Kuni? I'm like, so it, it doesn't matter. So, I think it only matters when you force it into the conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we, like, like you just said, we can talk about My Hero and never have to bring up mm-hmm. anything that we got going on. Right. But it's until somebody brings it up, and then it's like, okay, now we might have a divide in this conversation because you provided this divide. Mm-hmm. When it didn't really have to be. Right. Yeah. Well, that was all of my questions. Did you that have anything else? That was all my questions. Did you have anything you wanted to No, say? I ain't had no questions. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't had no questions. Um, no, I just, I didn't. Um, was there anything else that, you know, wanted to discuss? I just said I ain't had no more questions. I mean, you could have had statements, comments, concerns. I don't think I had any concerns. Like, as we talked, like, everything I wanted to ask you, I just asked you. Yeah, it came out. Everything that needed to be said, I think, came out of conversation. Well, all right. So we'll just go ahead and shut this down. So thank you, King G. For joining me on this special episode of Blur Mob Podcast. I hope everybody... Um, especially those who are members of the community and allies joint enjoyed this episode. Oh yes, I'm sorry, Erna. we can't, we forgot about the allies. Like they be feeling left out, so we gotta include the allies of the community. We see y'all support us. We see each we other. We see each other. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you, food, but I just I, and when you said allies, it dawned on me because you know we got friends that might think they're not appreciated as allies. So. No, you guys are definitely. But You're, that yeah. that goes back to what we were talking about like how we can have discussion with our friend group Mm -hmm. and i'm very appreciated Mm -hmm. appreciative of them because they don't involve that right they don't involve they can look beyond that and you know really see you as a person or they don't look at our differences as like Mm -hmm. oh you're just saying that because you're this that exactly like all the allies we appreciate you so yeah (laughs) (laughs) but Definitely. Thank you, King G, for joining me on this special episode of the Blur Bond Podcast. I want to thank everybody who's been watching or listening, whether this is your first time or 50th time listening. The watches and listens are always appreciated. Make sure you guys um, check out, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but make sure you guys check out our affiliate links in the description for Entertainment Earth and Write Stuff Anime. And if you would like to donate to the mob but not you know, want to purchase anything from the affiliate links, please check out our Kofi link in the bottom and send us a donation. The donation goes towards equipment, software, and everything that is needed to continue making the podcast a production. So make sure you check that out. Um, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram at the Blurred Mob Pod, on Twitter at the Blurred Mob, and you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at the Blurred Mob Podcast. Mm-hmm. And just one more time, make sure you like that video, subscribe to the channel, and hit those bell notifications for future uploads. And with that said, this is the Mob checking out. Peace.
there's a lot that comes. He's gonna be trying to host the BET it. Awards. And <laughs> hey, he's gonna be like, oh, welcome to my BET Award. Please. He he gonna have a he Bro, gonna have Madea hosting the BET Awards. If, if he do that for the first BET Award, <laughs> I never turn him in again. I'm sorry, bro. I will.